My cousin spread these awful rumors about me when I went to college, making it absolutely so hard for me to find friends. But don't worry, I decided to get my own revenge. I'd always considered myself to be an excellent student, and I believed that my hard work and dedication would be paid off when I would be accepted into one of the most prestigious universities in the country. That was the plan, and I must admit that I was thrilled and the prospect of attending this school. I couldn't wait to start my new life on campus, but I knew that the transition to college would be challenging. I will say that I'm grateful for my friends and family who supported me during this part of my life. If only of you are reading this, uh, thank you for all the support. Without you, I don't know what would have been of me, and I wouldn't be here telling you this story. One of my closest relatives was my cousin, Sis. We'll call her Emily, and she was only a few years older than me. Emily had always been a bit of a troublemaker, but I had always been fond of her. We grew up together, sharing many childhood memories, and... Me and my cousin Emily just graduated from high school. We spent all those years together and we shared the same group of friends. Those were amazing days and I wish I could go back to them. During that time, we were planning on which college we were going to go to, and we both agreed on going to the same one. Most of our friends would go to that college as well and the place had everything we wanted. The buildings looked pretty, the dorms looked comfortable, and it was close to the sea. I was excited about my future and I even managed to somehow convince my boyfriend at the time that he should in fact live nearby. Since you know he was finishing his own college degree, he was quite older than me. Don't judge me, I was 18 in those years. My cousin on the other hand had other plans. During our last years in school she became a bit distant with me preferring to be with her new group of friends more often than with our friends with me, relying less on each other and speaking about our problems and lives even less. So, in my ignorant perspective of reality, I thought that we were in the same spot about our friendship, just that she had a different life, and I wouldn't be jealous of toxic relative who only wanted her for myself and myself only. I thought that I was a lot more mature than that. Turns out I was because what I didn't know was that my cousin had been seeing people who secretly hated me and made rumors about me. Since I kinda got a reputation back in high school as a easy girl, or whatever you want to call it, because I had fun being with quite a number of guys, but not because I was promiscuous or something, but because I knew myself to be quite easy to fall in love. And that just opened the door for many dudes to abuse and mistreat my feelings. That, of course, defined in part of how I am as a person. But that's not the point of this story. Turns out that some of the guys I dated began telling secrets about me and revealing sensitive information about my taste in bed, or <laughs> in love. Other girls despised me because I dated many of the guys they wanted to date who would not pay attention to them because of how superficial and unlikable they were. They managed to form some kind of alliance to try to ruin my life in high school during the last years, which they failed, since I had my own intimate group of friends who loved me for who I am and trusted me, and I knew perfectly that I could trust them no matter what. The said group of friends who shared with my cousin, but just like with me, she was distancing from them as well. Eventually, they would never talk and me and my friends would often just ask what happened to her. And I always answered, Ah, she's doing her own thing, she's fine. And then moved on with my life. I should have seen the signs, but anyways, thanks for introducing context, as this will make sense once we advance towards the story. After graduation, we both split ways for a time, but managed to keep contact as usual until the time of wait for admissions to the college we wanted to arrive. We both waited for months, and we both were excited about the opportunity all the time. However, we waited for a long time since we first applied for admission. Even our friends and her friends were accepted to that and other colleagues before us. We were getting extremely worried, especially me. I get these horrible anxiety attacks just thinking about my future. And what would become of me if I didn't go to college? 
Even knowing that I could go to another, I already convinced my boyfriend to move nearby and everything. I just could not accept not getting admitted there. However, my cousin seemed more relaxed than I was about the situation and just told me to chill. She learned about my anxiety and problems and she claimed to visit me more often and we started talking a lot, again, like the old times, and we became close once more and that made me quite happy. Even if I did not get news about college and stuff, we expect more time together and I also learned that she stopped seeing her quote friends who hated me. All was good and after five months I even stopped caring about the admission. However, one day I received an email from the college administration informing me that they need to talk with me personally because they had quote issues with my postulation and just need me there to clarify personally what happened. Well, I, I was in shock, as I did not expect any kind of communication from the administration of the college, nor an answer about my admission at all. I was also worried because that was not a rejection, but also it wasn't an acceptance either, was it? Which meant that I could be rejected personally, in that office, sitting in that chair. I told my cousin about it, and she reacted coolly, with no excitement, no jealousy, no preoccupation. She, well, just told me that she considered that weird, as she had not received any kind of response from them and that she might have the same problem and that I would be fine. I just needed to stay calm and just listen to whatever they want to explain to me, and also ask about her own situation, so she could know what happened with that as well if I had the chance. So far, all is good and supportive. The day I went to the office of admissions on campus, I was extremely nervous. I went alone as my cousin could not go with me as she was on a date, or so she told me. I entered the office, greeted the secretary, and waited for what felt like an absolute eternity, until she told me to enter the office of the principal, and once I got in, I took a seat and began staring at the eyes of the middle-aged man, who was acting polite and making his presentation. I'm not going to lie, but I felt more comfortable and relaxed once I saw that man, well, and he began talking. Time felt even slower. But before anyone makes their own assumptions, I'll now say that nothing ever happened with that gentleman. Nothing but for professional and, well, administrative talking. With that clear, once the conversation began, the principal explained that my admission letter was received by the administration, but it was lost or erased within the registers, and they couldn't review it. They did manage to retrieve my contact information, and with that, they could call me and inform me about it, and that although they were investigating what happened with my submission, the principal himself wanted to use this opportunity just to personally interview me and see if I got a place in their institution. He explained to me that the interview would not be a complex one since I went there unprepared and that he would only ask me questions, questions about general intelligence and my personality. We spent the whole afternoon talking, and I'm saying two hours being formal, with questions about what I want for my future, how I would manage my working life, and so on. And even after we finished the formal questions, we began talking about my personal life. I don't know, it may be because I kind of expressed a friendly and educated aura, and maybe he saw my preoccupation, and I think I did it well in the interview. Since I never saw him say anything negative about me, and the interview ended and I left the office. The principal said that he would contact me in the next three days, and that I have nothing to worry about and I just need to be patient. Then I left, at least a bit happier than I was when I arrived. I know many of you might ask, why didn't you say anything about your cousin? Well, I couldn't. I thought it would be just making me look like I was abusing the principal's generosity. I really wanted to ask and help my cousin, but I plan to do it after I get my news. So I could help her better once I got the principal's trust in me. Yet, when the time came, it wasn't necessary since my cousin had plans by herself. When I get home, I explain to my cousin about the interview and the reaction of the principal to my answers. 
She listened carefully and with a neutral face for the majority of the conversation. Yet, she took the time to ask questions and support me. She said that she was happy with me and that she supported me no matter what. Interestingly, she never asked if I even asked the principal about her submission. She just seemed okay with it or just didn't care. I became mad about this and started asking her why she looked like she didn't care, and we began fighting. She told me that I was being hysterical and that she cared about it, but she couldn't think anything else about it. That she wasn't even getting any answer about her own acceptance to the campus and that I should have more empathy towards her instead of fighting me over whether she acted like she cares or not. Well, I was furious, but the fight ended there and I left with a bitter taste in my mouth. Afterward, three days passed and the principal calls me. Emily was listening and waiting in the other room. While the principal was explaining my situation, he was very polite and encouraging with me. And then he told me that officially I would not be accepted until I got the acceptance letter in my hands, but that I could consider myself welcome to the campus. He congratulated me and explained that he was impressed with my interview and personality. Then he said that he was busy and that he had to leave the call, but that I could be at peace of mind and that I just needed to wait a few days to receive my letter. However, I had to interrupt the call because my cousin began talking loudly, mostly to clearly annoy me, but I finished the phone call before she could cause more disturbance and then proceeded to fight with her again. She apologized at least this time and we were fine for a couple days. That was until I received a new call about my acceptance letter to the university. They started asking me weird questions about my life in high school, like about some of my decisions there and that I needed to protect my manners and integrity to make the institution proud. At first, I thought it was just something normal, you know, some standard procedures. But later, I would realize why they told me these things. Things started to change between me and my cousin, all moved downwards from this point. Emily had also applied to the same school, of course, but had to wait longer for an answer and as time passed by, I guess she grew extremely impatient. I'd somehow already started studying while she was still just waiting until three months passed and she received her letter. She'd been rejected and she didn't take the news very well. At first, she acted like it wasn't a big deal, but as she saw me happy and studying, living my best life, little did I know that she became increasingly resentful of me. We had a lot of discussions, a lot of fighting, to the point that we grew distant again, and this is where her plan started, and began to spread rumors about me, saying that I had only been accepted because I, well, had fun with the principal. These rumors started at first with her old group of friends, whom she started to see and interact with again, and of course they believed her. This would not have been an issue for me since only a few studied in the same college as me, and they didn't know my group of friends on campus, but they made a plan to turn my life into a living heck, and Emily was totally into it. When the rumors began spreading, it didn't take long to reach the administration office, which they at first dismissed as just college rumors, but began raising suspicion about me. At first, I was completely oblivious to these rumors, but soon they began to reach my ears, and I was horrified. Most of my friends reached me asking if it was true, which I knew was completely false, and they believed me after days. However, both my friends and I were afraid that the rumors might damage my reputation and jeopardize my future at the university. And what made things worse? It could cause severe problems for the principal if the rumors spread too far. And they advanced too far and nobody would ever want to talk to me. And what was even worse? I received news that the principal resigned instead of kicking me out of the institution. The news made me feel even worse and made me be a bit determined to shut down this circus. So, I start asking and investigating these rumors. Who started them? How far it spread across the college? I became obsessed with the subject and people began looking at me weird. Even if they didn't know about the rumors, I was paranoid. 
and I didn't know what to do about it, and worst of all, I didn't know if it was my cousin and her friends who started these rumors, and I got no evidence of them being the culprits. Two weeks went by, and everything went worse. As I was hearing many students across the campus talking about me, saying that I was on a mission to destroy the marriage of the principal and that I was planning on sleeping with many more teachers. It was a total nightmare, and I couldn't even go to the bathroom without hearing strangers discussing my private life. I will continue this and the next post and next update. Just remembering how bad those days were, it made me want to puke. Update number one. So a month has passed since the last time I wrote, and I had to endure the consequences of the rumors. Most of my friends avoided me in order to get not affected by them, and I couldn't blame them. I was overwhelmed by crippling depression at this point, and that affected even my grades. Hopefully, I never failed any exams or grades, but it was close. It wasn't until my best friend, who was worried about me, conducted research that took quite a lot of his free time. And after following several connections, he found out that the friend of my cousin who began spreading the rumors. Turns out, he wasn't alone, as a group of other related people began spreading the same story to different classes. And my friend also discovered something absolutely horrific. They had begun sending everyone intimate and personal information about me on my life in high school, and my former couples. When my friend told me, I absolutely just wanted to die. And I also began suspecting who began this nightmare. However, I didn't have any hardcore proof of that, so I did ask her personally. I'd explained to my cousin my problems about the rumors since they began. And she seemed supportive, so why doubt her? Maybe her former friends who still held resentment over me still wanted to ruin my life. I managed to contact again my cousin Sis and tried to confront her about the rumors, asking just out of curiosity to prevent any fighting, but she denied any involvement and even felt attacked. She was angry and said that if I could think that of her after all she had done for me and after abandoning her, then maybe I need to learn about gratitude and empathy, and that she was severely disappointed. I replied that I did not abandon her, that it was the opposite actually, and that she went too far with what she did. She continued denying it but insulting me, and we almost hit each other. We only stopped after my aunt appeared and separated us. After that, our relationship became increasingly strained. I was completely hurt and confused by my cousin's behavior, but I didn't know what to do to stop the rumors from spreading and causing more damage. As the end of the school year approached, I found myself feeling increasingly anxious, depressed, and isolated. I didn't know who to trust, and I was afraid that my classmates and professors would continue judging me based on the lies that Emily and her friends spread. So, I began planning my sweet revenge. While I was against the rumors, I started leading some kind of network of counter-espionage, if you will, with my friends, and I began fighting rumors with rumors. I knew that my cousin wasn't even in my college, but that would not stop me from getting revenge. I knew some secrets about her, and I learned that after she was looking for a job, so I could do something about that and return her the favor... When I finally arrived on campus for the next school year, I tried to put on a brave face and focus on my studies. I threw myself into the coursework. I was determined to prove myself to others that I deserved to be there. However, the rumors continued to follow me and I found it hard to make new friends or connect with my classmates. My old friends, although supportive, became distant and we could not share as many moments as before. I felt like an outsider, and I also began to wonder if Emily's lies had ruined my chances of success. Despite these setbacks, I refused to give up. I continued to work hard, or at least try. What helped during this time was that my friends began to ignore the rumors, and my reputation, and began joining me again. 
which led to other people getting to know me and I eventually started to make some friends who saw me for who I really was. I also finally began to stand up for myself and to challenge those rumors head on whenever I heard them. Update number two posted by OP. Over time, my reputation began to recover, and I start to feel more confident and secure in my place at the university. I even start to enjoy my classes and explore some of the other opportunities that the school had to offer. Teachers began respecting me again and did not pay attention to any more gossip, since college life began to feel normal, at last. Meanwhile, Emily's behavior continued to deteriorate. She had become obsessed with the idea of taking me down for some reason. However, her frustration would prove to be her downfall, and she had started to spread even more malicious rumors about me, but more exaggerated. Emily's behavior had become so erratic and destructive that she even mistreated her friends and made them follow her schemes, eventually making them be removed from the university for being too problematic and harmful which for me was great news. It was also at this time that I figured out that she was responsible for these rumors, as well because I caught her talking with some of my classmates after class, outside of college. They were part of the group who believed the rumors and avoided me and mocked me. She couldn't get over the fact that she was rejected and hated me because of how well my life was going. I was surprised, but I acted accordingly, and just avoided her at all cost, while I planned my revenge. Emily's friends were initially supportive of her when she spread the rumors about me. They believed Emily's story and were quick to join in on the gossip, spreading the lies further around the college and even outside of the college at this point, which made part of my personal life a problem on another scale. Some of them even went so far as to insult me on forums online social media, even in real life, calling me derogatory names right behind my back. However, as I began to defend myself again and the truth came out once more after a long time, something unexpected happened. Some of Emily's friends start to feel guilty about their behavior and realize that they've been believing the rumors without even questioning them. And those who were also responsible for spreading the rumors were sorry as well that they had been unfair to me. Never taking the time to know me, and some of them even tried to reach out to me to apologize and make amends, now that we were at different times in our life. But I was not interested in forgiving them so easily, of course. I was hurt by their actions and the insults they hurled at me. I hated them, and I didn't want to be friends with people who were so quick to believe the worst about me without even giving me a chance to defend myself. Worst of all, people mocked me and humiliated me for my secrets and personal life. But what I would do is pretend that I forgive them and obtain information from them, also using them against Emily. Thanks to them, I learned that Emily was making friends inside the college and that she also applied for a job in the office as a secretary. I remained respectful and cordial towards Emily's old friends. I didn't hold a grudge against them, not as much as I had with Emily, and I also knew that they were only stupid humans and capable of making mistakes. I hoped that they would learn from this experience and become more careful and thoughtful in the future. But maybe I'm too naive to believe that. Thank you everybody for all your updates and advice in the comment sections. I think that's all for now. So this story was basically just a huge fight between OP and her cousin. If you guys have ever been in a situation like this, let me know your thoughts about it first of all. And second of all, drop a comment down below how you would go about handling this situation. I want to hear directly from you guys. And if you're new to the channel, make sure that you do subscribe just in case this original poster decides to make an update for it. Once again, thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you do want to watch more videos, check out down below. You can find all my other links and all my other channels in the description. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you tomorrow.